Laura Business Conservation Committee uh, interviews. Laura Dorsey. No. Yeah. Okay, then we will go with Judith Dosset. Dosset, come on up, please. And just tell us a little bit about why you're interested in, in this position, please. I grew up in Tennessee, um, hiking the Appalachian Trail with my dad. And now I hike the Appalachian Trail in Vermont with my dog. Um, and it's amazing what you can see from the trail that you don't necessarily see from the road. And I, I love Vermont, but I, I am concerned about um, keeping Vermont, Vermont. And that doesn't mean that I would stand in the way of something that was good for the town, but I um, would be proud to be part of a watchdog committee that made sure that things were done correctly. Okay. Have you in the um to the conservation commission meeting yes i am and you're going to be able to make all the meetings and yes. terry or susan any questions no okay. no questions okay um we or, or should we? Yeah, can we uh, Lauren, are you in line at all? And then I phone to me. Okay. Uh, so, Stephen, Lauren was approved last week by the trustees, correct? Correct. So, there are two spots open. One right. spot has been probably filled by Lauren, being approved by trustees, but not by the site board. Okay. And then Judith to here could be the other spot if approved by the Look forward tonight and trustees at the next meeting. All right. So we'd like to make the motion. Um, motion to um approve to the Dasset Dasset um for the conservation commission. Okay. Um subject to the trustees. Yes. Okay. The motion been made. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm guessing you're in favor. So, <laughs> so you and Susan and Carrie, you in favor? Susan said yes. Okay, I didn't see that. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go see the trustees. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you all have the microphones close to you? Because it is a little hard to hear. Okay. Is that better? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. Um, additions and deletions on the post agenda. Yeah, we just want to add uh, the next site board meeting, a uh, change of date and time. Uh, so we can put that under uh, new business. Okay. Citizens' comments. Come on up. Let's see. Take that over. Yeah, thanks. Good evening. Hello. I'm Tom Weschler, a property owner in Woodstock and an Ottaquichi River Trail volunteer. Um, let's not lose sight of what the Ottaquichi River Trail is trying to do. 500 people per week use our trail and our universal access project will now enable all people to be able to enjoy the Ottaquichi River and nature. ORT has just received our conditional permit from the VDRB and we're now in the 30 day comment period. Our project calls for control of invasives that are there on the 1.23 acre 
along with the replanting of native vegetation. ORT has greatly enhanced this partial that is our trailhead from a forgotten property to a vibrant companion piece to East End Park through a limited budget, a very active volunteer group and support from the EDC and the select board. I asked the question, why is the town still considering buying the 1.23 acre parcel? This makes little sense. Maybe a few years ago, there was some logic when there was belief that they could put sizable parking on the lower level. This isn't the case. Now the whisper application calls for floodplain protection and to prevent development within the river corridor, which will restrict opportunities for all, including the town. Purchase of the property um, does not come with any ongoing money or maintenance or support. Uh, the town will also lose Woodstock Resort Corp taxes. And I remind everyone of what occurred last year with Faulkner Park when property was donated with an $800,000 endowment, uh, but the town voted to turn it down. Importantly, the Whisper loan funds are not at risk. The town can use the Whisper loan proceeds for town village, uh, higher priority environmental and conservation projects. The select board just needs to vote to not purchase the 1.23 acres. Then the entire $280,000 will be free for you to use for better projects. Thank you. Here, thank you. Any other citizen comments? Can I? Come on up. Yeah. You okay with that, Tom? Please. Another Tom? Hi, I'm Tom Phelps. Hi, Susan. Hey, uh, I'm on the board of the uh, Connecticut River Conservancy, and the Atacuichi happens to be a tributary to the Connecticut River. Everything we can do to get water to the Connecticut River in its purest sense without being dolled up helps our community and neighboring communities. I couldn't agree more that there are very, very few public access, particularly locations that are for disabled people to talk, walk, and be around nature. This is one of those places. I strongly suggest the town to not consider buying the property and allow this community to flourish with the current project as it is seen. I think Tom's doing a hell of a job too. Thank you. Any other citizens comments? Okay, um, manager's report. Yep, um, just a few things uh, based on the last citizen's comments. Um, my office has been in touch with you know, Woodstock, ORT, the resort. Uh, working through this issue, uh, talking to the states, uh, and we're confident that pretty soon we'll have a solution that benefits everyone together. Uh, and those conversations are still ongoing, uh, but I think they've been fruitful. And I want to thank all the parties involved for you know working together on the solution. Um, so there's that. I want to uh, just uh, let the community know that there's July 4th fireworks will be happening uh, as usual um, at the high school on July 4th. Um, so there'll be a flag coming out. Uh, it will be in the newspaper, but uh, hopefully everyone can join us for another celebration um, and have some fun. 
Uh, finally, um, on the South Woodstock project, um, the town has to pay about a uh, $46,000 more than originally uh, estimated. Um, that's based off of the way the contract was created between the construction company and the engineering company. Um, the town signed a contract with the engineering company for one year. Um, they signed a contract with the construction company for a year plus, I believe, 100 days extra, uh, just based on the way the bidding and timing worked out. Um, so the project is still ongoing with completion date in the next few weeks, um, but the engineering firm um, contract expired on March 30th. Um, so to get the state's guidance from April through the end of the project, it's about $46,000 more to pay for the consulting firm to kind of oversee and make sure the project comes to completion um, and we'll get the final approval from the states. Uh, so that's something we would consider as well. Thank you. Um, then for the financial report, uh, it's in the booklet. Uh, I sent the, the, the board. Uh, Susan, has, Susan has some questions, which I believe I answered ahead of time. Um, but if there are any other questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, with about 10 days left in the fiscal year, uh, it looks like we should be in a good spot to end the year in um, a small surplus. Great. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We have permits? No permits. This no. And then uh, we told the town hall building committee that come back in July. Okay, so new business. Permit fees uh, from the planning and zoning. Stephen, come on up. Hi, all. Um, for the record, Stephen Bauer, Director of Planning and Zoning. Um, hopefully, everyone has their their sheet with the with the permit fees. So essentially, we'll try and um, stay quick, but kind of uh, wanting to establish a annual review of what our zoning permit fees, uh, where they should increase, decrease, and just kind of give a give a brief review. I don't know that we've ever established that within the department, and so that's something that I think that we should do, um, just to make sure that we are modern and up to date. Um, so. I'll start with, did, does anyone have any specific questions about uh, the fees that were proposed to you all? The um, fees that were proposed were, um, I think that they were approved by the trustees. Correct. Yeah, they're approved last Tuesday by the, by the trustees. So I'll add quickly just that our, so we're coming to the close of, just like Eric just said, about 10 days left. Uh, we had budgeted for FY23, a total of $14,000 for the town zoning permit fees. And we're, we're right now looking at about an estimated total revenue generation of just under 20 now. That's good. Um, under this, so I took the liberty of, of putting together the fees uh, for what is proposed of what could be generated. And if FY23 copied exactly all of the things that we have for F, if, sorry, FY24 was just a copy and paste of FY23, uh, we would generate uh, $108,000 to $125. Uh, dollars. So, okay. Yeah. Any additional questions on that? Susan Kerry, any questions? I have no questions. I think it's a great idea. My only comment is um, that I hope we can somehow track the, any comments that come into the zoning office about the fees so that it helps with the annual review. Great. I, I agree. Okay. That being said, I move, I move that we accept the zoning fees for. Uh, Mary made a motion to accept the Permit fees from the zoning and zoning. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. The next one is a request for a class four 
TH97 to be terminated. Is Leo Warner here? No. No. So all we had to go off of is his letter that he sent. Um, they're requesting class four TH97 um, is about 369.6 feet to be terminated. Uh, it's the driveway for the Mill Mall, which straddles Woodstock and Bridgewater. Um, so I believe it's just some of the highway kind of goes yeah. to his driveway and um, he wants to take care of himself. So I think that's the... There's no downside to that. This, um, well, this does, it's the entrance to the Mill Mall. Right. I can speak to that. Oh, fine. Okay. Thank you. My name is Leo Wer. I am the principal of WB Mill, as well as of the Mill Mall and the Owners Association. Uh, Town Highway 57 in Woodstock. It's about 0.07 miles, about 370 feet. It's our driveway into the mall, into the Mill Mall. And actually, there was an event this weekend that somebody ran into the side because it's in the middle of the driveway, you know, and so we're going to have to start redoing it. They actually, I don't know how they did it, but it's all askew now, so it'll have to be repaired. I was one, since it's a class four road and the town doesn't do anything to maintain it. Uh, so part of it is asphalt, which has fallen apart, and part of it is like dirt which has fallen apart. Uh, so our goal, if they see, since it is our driveway, to sort of fix the sign and actually maybe even move it so it's not in the middle of the road so people don't run into it, um, and also start ripping up the asphalt and replacing it with gravel, basically. It'll be easier to maintain. One of the things we run into is people say, oh, you can't do it. I can go as fast as I want on this road because it's a class four. The problem, of course, is that when you put dirt down in there, suddenly spinning and it's like, okay, another $2,200 worth of dirt just went up in smoke, basically. So, um, and since the town doesn't maintain it, uh, my request would be for the town to give up the town that 370 feet and we will basically configure it, you know, so it's still access, don't get me wrong. Uh, and we're going to basically say, you can't go more than 15 miles an hour down this road. Forget this 40 mile an hour coming, you know, keeping the dust down and everything else at the same time. The other thing is on a longer term for where Ramuntos is, I actually did hard pan there. Uh, we want to turn that into more pedestrian. In other words, block it off. You'll still get to the post office. Don't get me wrong. Still everything, but at least it'll slow people down. Plus, Ramuntos will be able to put out tables and have it near the river and, you know, basically enhance their business as well. So, well, has, have you spoken to the Romantos people? Oh, of course, they, they absolutely, they, they're my tenants, okay? So they really would love to have that happen. Again, you know- But the, that's the, the Bridgewater side. That's the Bridgewater side. But the thing is, if, I've already met with the Bridgewater Select Board. And I said, can you discontinue your part of Town Highway 59? because, you know, they're never going to maintain it. And they were, they said, fine. I mean, you know, whatever process they're going to use now. Uh, but we want to basically slow people down so we can improve the road, you know, and uh, basically make it much more user friendly. That's what we're looking to do. And um, this, all the, um, uh, the um, driveway, uh, Plowing and everything is your yeah. your responsibility. We, yeah. we have to. We've always had res that responsibility. Don't get me wrong. I'd love the town to say, "Okay, we'll take it over and we'll maintain it for you. We'll fill it. We'll." Ma That's not going to happen, you know, because it really is our driveway when you get right down to it. And so again, it's going to be our driveway, and we're sort of like fixing it up. And you know, I'll be. I'm actually being with the conservation commission tomorrow night. And then town review board, because we're, we're trying to clean up the bank there because the river bank is like a, 
I mean, on the don't get me wrong, on the Bridgewater side, Charlie Shackle didn't ask anybody and just note it all down. It looks quite interesting. But on the Woodstock side, I, not, I didn't want to do that because I wanted to get everybody involved with it. And uh, it's like a junk pile down there. When you walk down, it's like, oh my goodness, look at there's cans and bags. I found used condoms there today. And I was like, give me a break. This is just a this is just a junk pile at this stage of the game. It needs to be cleaned up. This is the um the um, the uh, highway supervisor here for the town, and Mark, what do you propose? I, I don't think that would be temporary. Also, okay. It's not really it's really much about it. You know, it's the way it makes it all right. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> I was leaving. Okay. So I don't I don't know what the process is. My understanding is you'll warn it and say anybody has objections to like throwing up the road, fine. Since we're the only one there and we own all the land around it, and the only neighbor is the Alaquichi, right. uh, I don't think anyone's gonna have any objection to it. Uh, so that would be my request so we can sort of like get it all and cleaned I'll, up. I'll uh entertain a motion to but discontinue the road. Discontinue uh, down Highway 57. On Highway 57 and turn that over to, what's the name of the company? It's the it's the Old Mill Marketplace Owners Association. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, you, you've moved. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Um, we, so Chair, if I could for one second. Sure. Um, I think we're we have four board members. Oh, you're set. Thank you. I'm done. Okay. Yes, uh, we have four board members uh, currently present. I believe two have to leave at seven o'clock. Um, so, it'd be my recommendation to kind of uh, pick out the new business ones that have a time sensitive, okay. um, and then move to the sewer. Uh, questions and then if we have time go back to the ones that left and if we need to uh, have a special meeting to finish up next week or something okay, okay. Uh, so I would suggest we tackle number four seven and eight and nine which would be the July meeting first uh, and then go into um pursue a commission okay okay um, all right so the preliminary Alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the board uh, for number four, the RFI alone, um, you have the documents in front of you. Uh, what this basically is, is a revolving fund uh, for the main wastewater treatment plant that we're working on. Um, it's $105,000 that you can get yearly, um, and you're allowed to reimburse up to $52,000 worth of costs. So if this is approved um, by the board tonight, I uh, will file a paperwork tomorrow uh, and get $52,000 worth of the engineering costs that have gone to the main plant reimbursed uh, before June 30th. Any questions? I'll, uh, I think Susan question. I, I, sorry, I just had a question on, on, I think it's page 56 of our packet. Is oh, that, so Susan, am I looking at? Susan, I'm sorry, not we're wrong. on number four. So, oh, oh, sorry. Okay. I Never know mind. what your question is going to be, so we'll get there. <laughs> okay. Never mind. <laughs> okay. If there's no questions, is there a motion to approve the, the loan? So, uh, so moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The loan has been approved. Okay. All right. So now we're at seven. Mark. Um, so as the board remembers, um, a few weeks ago, um, the board allocated $300,000 of the opera funds, the Calvin Hill Road project. Uh, with that information, Mark Hunter, the director, uh, solicited bids for that work. Um, and he's here uh, in front of the board with his recommendations for what bid to accept. Uh, and I believe you have the documents in the, in the, in the handout as well. 
but I'll turn it over to Mark. Um, I did get three of them. Um, two of them are a little high. Um, I've been speaking with Northwood Excavation. Um, that's the lowest bid. He is eager to move forward with the work. Um, he's done work for several years in the town. Um, I met with him a few times. I met with him recently. Um, we have a, a separate issue on Old River Road. Um, I won a grant with VTrans and I, I turned that over to him. Um, I think he's more than qualified to do the, um, the job on Carlin Hill. Um, he's doing a, um, a similar job for another town. Um, and I think it would be wise of the town to um, go forward with North, Northwood's excavation. Susan, carry any questions? No questions. Okay. Then I would entertain a motion to approve Northwoods excavating as a contractor for. Uh, for so work. moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Um, next is um, our IT RFP. Um, so in early May, I advertised for requests for proposals for information technology for the municipality of Woodstock. Um, the deadline was May 26th. Uh, we received seven proposals from vendors across the country, um, and those proposals were reviewed by myself and Fire Chief David Green. Um, after reviewing all the proposals, we decided that the proposal from the town of Hanover, New Hampshire, was the best option for Woodstock due to the price, the location expertise, and the long-term potential of sharing services. Uh, tonight, I'm recommending to the board that you accept our nomination, uh, recommendation, uh, and allow us to go forward into, into a contract with the town of Hanover, New Hampshire. Um, with that said, you see on that, that sheet, it cost will be $2,000 a month um, with a $6,000 um, startup fee, which is basically them coming out doing a full audit of all our services, uh, attaching remote capabilities so they can work remotely on our computers if needed, um, and kind of then coming up with critical needs or long-term needs that the town and village may have going forward. Um, with all that said, um, in full transparency, um, the town manager of Hanover is a colleague of mine. Uh, we do talk frequently about issues we face and use each other for support. Um, and because of that, I had David Green review the proposals with me uh, so it would be with no bias on my part or his part. Um, and so with that said, we do still believe that Hanover is the best option. Uh, but I do want to say publicly for the record that I do have a friendly relationship with the town manager in Hanover. Thank you. Any questions? No questions. Um, I would like someone to make a motion to approve town of the Hanover to do our IT work. Moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so number nine, um, our typical July meeting will be the third uh, Tuesday of July. Uh, I'm going to be out on vacation um, that week. So I asked the chair if we could move it to the previous week. Uh, so July 11th at 10 a.m. that works to the board uh, instead of July 18th at 6 p.m. Uh, so I asked that that change could be made um, so I could attend the meeting in person. July 11th? Yes. At 10 a.m.? 10 a.m., yeah. Or if it's another time it works better for the members of the board, I'm happy to accommodate that time as well. Okay. We, have to, we don't have to make a motion on that, do we? Yeah. I think if you just accept it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Susan, carry that's fine with you. Fine with me. Susan? I don't have my calendar, but I think it's fine. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. here it is. Um, so it's 6 30. We're making good time. Um, let's do the sewer permits. Yeah, if you want to go in the Board of Sewer Commissions and do the permits oh. and then abatements and go from there. Yeah. And then, um, Okay, so we're gonna 
skip to the sewer right now. There's a payment request for four Swain Street. Hey, JD. Um, The abatement they're requesting uh, $103.32. Uh, $103 um, the payment was delayed, uh, they're saying, due to delayed receipt of the bill because of change of address. Um, I don't have information on when they changed their address or whether uh, we're aware of it ahead of time or not. Um, my assumption is that we were not aware of it because we do make the changes as we as we are told. Um, Susan Kerry, any comments? I think that the landowner bears the responsibility of letting the town know their address has changed. I don't think that's the town's responsibility. I agree. I agree with Susan, yep. Okay, then I will entertain a motion um, for the abatement of $103.32. To approve or disapprove? A disapprove. Okay, all those in motion. Second. Made. Okay, motion's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then we have two permits one for no. 7048 East Woodstock Road and 708 East Woodstock Road. Um, have they paid their new fees that are associated with this? I don't have the answer, but we can uh, approve it with the assumption that paid, the fees have been paid. Yes, this, um, this. Oh, let's see. Or, okay. oh, here they are. Okay. Yes. I will. Um, Entertain a motion on any questions about the sewer permits for 2748 East Woodstock Road and 708 East Woodstock Road. I just have a quick question. Do we have a process where someone goes out, someone from the town checks this, checks these connections before they're closed up? So usually, Mark, Mark, yeah. So uh, either myself or Tim would be there on site to approve them before they make the connection. So Perfect. that's, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And so this is approval with making sure all the fees are paid. Yes, because the fees are paid. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's been made and approved. I would um, suggest we go to number six. Yep. Okay. Is there anyone? So number Cloudland, potential closure of Cloudland Farm Road. Is there somebody that would like to come up and speak about that? So, you say, yes, you say your name for the record. My name is Kathy Emmons, Cloudland Farm, Cloudland Road. Um, there's a group in our neighborhood of maybe 30 or more people that have been emailing and discussing the foliage traffic issue on Cloudland, which is becoming a nightmare. Um, the traffic has grown exponentially over the last three years, mostly because of social media and Instagram and TikTokers and many, many, many of them are just coming to get a picture of themselves with Sleepy Hollow in the background and then they just leave and go back and literally that's all that's happening. They don't even venture as far up as us usually. I would say that 85% of the people are going right there at Sleepy Hollow. So it's becoming a, you know, 
a hazard as far as safety concern, as far as if an emergency vehicle had to come through there, honestly, they couldn't. Um, I believe we furnished you with some photos earlier today, and I hope everybody on the select board. Uh, I didn't see any photos. I, I, I did. I, oh. I sent them to everybody. So. Oh, I did. Um, and then um, just showing, just so you can see what the situation looks like. Um, and our Pomfret Select Board, we have met with them twice now, and we've all been brainstorming, trying to figure out how we can fix this problem. Um, we have so far gotten the geotag removed from Google, Google Maps. Um, so there's no longer a pin showing Sleepy Hollow Farm. Um, our select board has written a letter um, for us to distribute to all the Woodstock tourist organizations um, and anybody anywhere, AAA, anybody that's promoting this as a tourist destination. Um, our select board is kindly requesting uh, that, yeah. I have that. Okay. Yeah. Um, that it just not be promoted. Um, it is a private home, but that's the main thing. It, it's a private home with no facilities. There are no parking lots. There's no parking spaces. It's on a very narrow dirt road. And um, it's a big invasion of privacy for both those homeowners and also many people on Cloudland Road, the whole Doton family. Some of the Doton family doesn't even want to stay in their homes for the foliage because it's such an intrusion. Um, and then the problem goes down to Barber Hill as well. John Morley and Glenn had people way up their driveway on their patio. But we all have countless stories of picnicking and Marguerite's hay field, um, trash, going to the bathroom, vomiting in people's driveways. Um, it's just becoming a real nightmare. I mean, the photos tell the story the best, which were sent earlier. Um, we also have a letter from the fire chief in Pomfret um, talking about the safety issues and also that even the one way, um, though it at least created some semblance of a flow of traffic, um, it, it caused delays for emergency vehicles, which would then only ha would have to go from Pomfret around to come up Cloudland if there was an emergency. And we do have several older residents on Cloudland Road. Um, so just you've spoken to the um, residents from Woodstock that live on. So here are some emails, which Ray, you had got some of these yeah. today. The last one in hand that's handwritten is from Tom and Janet Bourne at the end of Cloudland. And um, they are. Everyone that we spoke to, I don't know, here's another one, Laura McDill down there. Um, everyone's in favor, except Kim and Scott Smith did not want to write a letter. They have some other concerns about, I believe, tourism in general and not wanting to cause any issues there. We feel that this is not a Woodstock tourism problem, but it's a Sleepy Hollow Farm um, nightmare. And we are trying our best just to be able to, if we can close the road for one year, for one foliage season, or maybe two, and hopefully get this whole place off the map and off the TikTokers sites, that maybe things will quiet down for the longer term. Um, what dates are you looking at? Well... I mean, it's really up to our select board. I see Brent, Ben Brickner is a conference select board member and he's on the Zoom. Um, we haven't set any dates and they haven't, you know, agreed to any particular closures yet, except that if they close it at the Pomfret Woodstock line, there's no way all those cars can turn around there. Um, so closing it at the end by the cemetery allows them either to continue you know, down to the beautiful Taftsville Bridge and get back on four and go back to Woodstock, or, you know, maybe they could loop around there and head back to Woodstock. We also, here is an email from the um, Guillermo and Raphael, who are the current owners of Sleepy Hollow Farm, and they are completely in favor. The letter tells you that it's a huge annoyance to them, the whole neighborhood. Um, they are worried about 
so many people and just safety of their own property. Um, and also in that letter, they're asking, you know, Woodstock officials, please to stop promoting this as a tourist destination. It is their private home. So that's it. Any questions? No, I did notice who is it? Um, an employee of the EDC that runs the Woodstock Vermont Instagram feed. Who runs that? I was told by John Spector that it is shared between the Woodstock Chamber and the EDC. They just promoted Sleepy Hollow. They promoted yeah. Sleepy Hollow and they mm -hmm. also tagged another private home in Pomfret in their post. And I specifically emailed with John quite a bit on um, Saturday saying, look, public promotion of private homes seems like not a good thing to do. I mean, obviously with Sleepy Hollow, it's created a very serious issue. And, you know, we'll leave it there. So absolutely. I would be in favor of seeing what the Pomfret board selects and then figuring out how we can best support them. That would be my preliminary mm -hmm. suggestion. Okay. Is that a motion? Well, I mean, it doesn't have to. Does it need to be a motion right now? I don't think no. it needs to be. I'll, I just no, Carrie, think... yeah, Carrie's correct. We can just, we have a, a discussion now um, and this decision can be put off until Pomfret makes a decision until we get closer to her. Well, I will just say that I know Pomfret is waiting to hear if you will allow closure at the cemetery. The cemetery. At the end of Cloudland Road versus partway up Cloudland Road at the line, at the Pomfret Woodstock Town line. Oh. I, I think if Pomfret closes, on their end, it only makes sense to close it our and shoot and just try it, you know, try it for a year and see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, I would be in favor of that. I would like to, I think we need to do it bilateral. It doesn't need to be a unilateral um, decision because it would only really make sense to do it together. And all the, all the neighbors, all the people that live on Plowman Road seem to be in favor of it. The except, except possibly the Smith. Mm -hmm. Wendy Marinan has a hand. Sorry. Wendy? Oh, Wendy has. She's... Wendy, you're on mute. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Ray. Um, I applaud the, the community neighbors coming together to raise this concern. And I just wanted to um, support Carrie's question about who's what marketing is happening on Woodstock's end. I think this exposes a, a problem we've already experienced with the internet and GPS, but it, it it really highlights the dangerous nature of uh very marketing like this. And I just wanted to add that comment if the select board could follow up with the EDC and our marketing program in Woodstock to be more sensitive with this, these issues in mind. Thanks. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Susan, did you have a comment? Yes, I'm just wondering how you envision it being enforced. Well, I mean, that will be partly up to the Smith right here. Our select board, hi. And um, I mean, last year, the town of Pomfret paid thousands of dollars to have a sheriff present just for the one way to be sure that cars weren't going the wrong way. So I'm sure that's on the table. I know that the neighbors are willing to do what we have to, to try to have some enforcement um, in a present, but definitely road closed signs and probably some no parking signs and who knows. So that parking by the, the cemetery, mm -hmm. and then they all go to Barbara Hill. Well, I mean, we have also discussed with our select board the possibility of closing Barbara Hill as well. All right, then what? Okay, so then where do they go? Well, for what? what what's the question? Well, they're going to where as they the outlet. They won't they won't be they allowed won't up. The road. They won't go up the road. 
Oh, they won't be allowed. It'll be residents only. Cloudland oh. Road residents only. Oh, and they would not be the Barber Hill. Right. Oh, okay. I mean, that's the oh. that's what we're talking about. And I think before Susan makes a good point though on the Woodstock end, you know, Mark and RV put up no signs of you know residents only or whatever, but um, there may be a cost associated with enforcement or calls yeah. to the police are police going back and up up and back. Um, well, they would if if they close it there. I'm assuming mm -hmm. that if Pomfret has a detail, they'll put it down on at the end, at the very right. end. Okay. Wow, it, yeah. it doesn't make sense to do it halfway up. Yeah, Hi. and let this is Meg Emmons here from the Pomfret Select Board. We we have talked to the sheriff about um, sort of adding to our normal patrol that's contracted with them so there is talk about patrolling the end wherever it's closed or if it was to be one way depending on what's decided in the end um, and that will be patrolled on the weekends i'm not sure the hours again i think it would be for six to eight hours potentially on saturday and sunday Um, I know the smart speaker said, do you, we have, do, you, uh, do you want to have a comment or what? Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry, if you, if you do want to come on up. Come on up. Yeah, here. There's a microphone oh, here also. Here, but, yeah. um, so I own several businesses in town and I appreciate all the marketing efforts on the EDC part, but there was marketing of Sleepy Hollow and another Cloudland Farm. I don't know if you visited this yet. What? The EDC yes, yes, and the marketing monies. So I, my, so I have it on my phone. Yeah. And I think that we should just stop marketing people's private residence. Yeah. And this is my issue with it. That's Barbara Hill. That one stays. Yeah. Still, still take it. Okay. So I go to my phone. I don't want to rush you, but. Okay. So, <laughs> no, no. you know, so I, you know, I was called upon, not prepared. No, but the. But, so this was on the social media. Two. Woodstock social media yeah, just the other day. Was it really? Yes. So yeah, I, I think we, I think that uh, I think we, maybe that stops now <coughs> well, as a resident of Cloudland. We're, right? We're, it, Absolutely. No. I, and I think that the EDC has already been made aware that that was really inappropriate. And okay. I think that that I think that that social media work was done. And in, in, from my understanding, it was the EDC and the um, Oh, that's all I'm saying. Is that in the, in the chamber? In the chamber. So they need. They know that it's an inappropriate accomplishment. Yeah, I, I I believe they were they're aware of it and they're going to change their. And there were two on Cloudland. This was the other one. I know. But okay, I just I just yeah. wanted to make sure that like um, this is a kind of a contradiction. Like we're having a problem on Cloudland, but advertising and promoting people's private residence. Is probably oh, one hundred stop. Yeah. One one hundred percent. You're exactly right. Yes. No. I we get no disagreement. I think with the board. Yeah. Um. So we'll wait to hear from the Pomfret. Yeah. Uh. I think we, we can have this on the agenda for the next few meetings and okay. we, we go back and we have a better conversation with Pomfret. I'd also like to bring in our police chief as well. Um, and, and Mark Hunter in a conversation, just so we're all on the same page yep. before we go forward with anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Quickly, up and sit. Scott Smith. Um, the uh, I'm, I understand the thing. I'm, I'm sort of in favor of closing it, but I'd be worried about the bar, the bar on the road there of what happens with people. 
just starting to park there. There's lots of people park there already at the bottom of Cloudland, and mm -hmm. what, what happens? Like it's it's an unknown. Uh, that would be an unknown, I guess. Well, that would be something that have yeah. to be worked out. Yes, that, that's all. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah, go up. Very stable. Right at the top, across from the schoolhouse, that's part of Sleepy Hollow. I had last year six people were parked in my driveway the whole time. I'm worried about legal. And it's any pictures that you saw there, it's worse than that. It, it really is. It, it's it's so bad. I just I was just going, even if the road wasn't one way, I was going I live right at the top. It's only a couple hundred yards to, to uh, Barber Hill. And I was just going down Barber Hill the last couple of years because it's just so bad trying to go down that road. If somebody's going to get hurt, a tourist, heart attack or something, and nobody's going to be able to get to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Okay, you need you need to come up front. Oh. Just state your name first, even though I know who you Margarita are. Margarita Pierce. Okay. I live on Southland Road, and the cars are parked from Sleepy Hollow past my house all the way out to my farmhouse and they park me in. If I get hurt and I can't get out of my driveway, then what? They park on my front lawn, they turn around, they relieve themselves in my yard. I'm very unhappy and something has to be done. I don't want to deal with it every year. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be next. Annie Mears Abbott of um, South Pomfret, formerly of Woodstock. And um, I, I just want to say that everybody in Woodstock around can tell horror stories all day long about annoying, annoying tourists, whether it's in town, out of town, elsewhere. And I think what I'd really like to emphasize is that this isn't that. Like, this isn't a general tourism problem. This is very specific to this one location, which is very kind of organically marketed itself outward. And I think um, I, I'm a Barber Hill resident also, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of closing that portion as well. But my, my concern is always that if we don't find a way to do something to tame, like just the outpouring of the publicity that's just marketing itself. Yes, the EDC can stop, can stop using their, you know, their Instagram account to do that, but that's like, the actual impact of that on the overall ecosystem of Instagram and TikTok and what's out there is going to be extremely, extremely minimal. And if we don't kind of curb this now, it's it's the potential for the continued continued ex exponential growth, um, like really cannot be understated. Okay, thank, thank you, Annie. You have a comment. I'm Jim Robinson. I live on Cloudland Road in Pomfret. Um, <clears throat> my in-laws, Fred and Nancy Doton, have a farm there called Elm Grove Farm. And in order to try to protect some of their own private property, they placed orange cones in the road. Well, a full-sized tour bus stopped, moved the cones, and parked in front of their barn. I counted 97 cars parked along the road on a Sunday from the schoolhouse down to Mrs. Pierce's house. It's a serious issue. And I, I have photographic evidence of all of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think- Ray, Ray, I would just like to say that I, really truly understand that this is a grievous and specific issue that far transcends like our general issues around tourism and i would like to just state here that i am really in support of whatever we can decide to do with the town of comfort um i have to hop off the call soon i'm away and for family reasons but i i, I so i need to hop off and i just don't want to um leave the meeting without just stating that i'm that i, I really feel like i understand what the issue is and i'm very much in support Okay, thank you, Terry. Um, and I know Susan, unless you have a comment, 
No, I agree that I think um, it's, you know, people in Reading are having the same problem and it's, it's you know, just private property being abused and, and that we should support Pomfret and what they're, whatever they need to do. I agree. Um, Brickner has that. his hand raised. Who? Ben Brickner of the Pomfret Select Board has his hand okay. raised. Hi, I, yes, this is Ben Brickner. I'm a Pomfret resident member of the Pomfret Select Board. Just have a logistical question. Um, thank you all very much for taking the time to to hear all the concerns that have been raised. Um, when Pomfret does make a decision on how to handle the traffic flow this year, what is the best way for us to communicate and coordinate uh, that decision with the town of Woodstock? Uh, should we be in touch with Eric? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that would be the best bet is uh, to throw with me. We've been tra training emails already. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and because we have two select board members that have to leave, two of us can't make any decisions, I will entertain a motion to adjourn for the evening. And so moved. Thank is there you. a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? Nobody? <laughs> So there was no. Yeah.